So, does this face look familiar to anyone? It is the face of a student who has told themselves that this next coming exam is worth everything. If they don't do well in this exam, they'll fail, or they'll, well, they may fail the exam. <laughs> they'll lower their GPA. It will lead them to not being able to get into the professional school they want to, and they won't get the job that they want. And now they enter this exam in the, with this huge weight on their shoulders, and they sit down to write it, and eventually this weight will uh, crash down on them, and they'll actually bomb this exam that they are putting so much hope on. So I don't know if this has happened to any of you, but I myself have uh, experienced such a situation. And from my personal experience, I learned one thing, that this heart right here, it scares very easily. And sometimes we actually have to, sometimes we actually have to alleviate this stress or fear, which is impeding our ability to uh, perform at the optimal level. Sometimes we may even have to lie to ourselves and tell ourselves that everything is going to be okay. And yeah, that everything is going to be okay. And this will actually allow us to calm down and we can finally find that serene place and face the challenge at hand. Now, one way we can do this is through cognitive dissonance. Now, cognitive dissonance occurs when we perform a behavior which is inconsistent with our original attitude. And this inconsistency actually leads to this mental pressure, a, a very uncomfortable, uneasy feeling, which we want to alleviate. And the only way to alleviate this is by creating consist consistency once again. So as an example, you have your interest TA interviews. And in the beginning, for example, you may be very nervous, you are very shaken up because maybe you've heard from, a, from an upper TA about the interview process that might happen. So what I'm proposing here today is to do one simple behavior. And that is, that is to just simply smile. Now this smiling behavior will be inconsistent with this original shaken up attitude. And since there's insufficient justification for this behavior, it will lead to an increase in dissonance. Now we want to leave our, alleviate ourselves from this mental pressure, so our attitude will become consistent with our behavior. And now you can enter Dr. Kim's office with a nice calm composure and maybe even with a big smile and get that TA position. So some of you might be thinking, is it really possible for just the physical act of smiling to influence our behavior, influence our emotion? And this has actually been observed in other research, such as the facial feedback hypothesis. Now, the facial feedback hypothesis proposes that just by you moving the muscles corresponding to a facial emotion, it can actually lead or trigger the, that corresponding emotion to occur. So for example, if you're forced to smile, you can actually eventually um, be, uh, elicit that emotion of happiness. So one very creative yet simple method used to test this hypothesis was by simply using a pencil to force these facial, uh, facial muscles to conform. So in the first uh, image, or the one on the left, your left, yep, yeah, the one on your left, <laughs> Basically, the pencil was held with only their lips, and this caused a frowning, uh, this forced a frown. Whereas in the right picture, they held the pencil with only their teeth, and this actually caused them, or forced them to smile. So using this technique, or using this method, Strack, Martin, and Stepper conducted an experiment in 1988, where they, where they asked participants to rate the humor, or perceived humor, in a comic or a cartoon. So in the control condition with the hands, they gave a mean funniness rating of a scale from zero to nine, nine being the funniest, of about 4.77. In the lip condition, it was about 4.32, and in the teeth condition, it was a whopping 5.14. Now, there was a statistically significant difference between the lip and teeth condition, which means that if you forced a frown, you were more, you're significantly more likely to actually rate the funniness in a comic as, lo as lower humor than those who forced a smile. So the simple act of smiling actually led to a change in perception or the uh, participant's per perception on a comic, just like how one of your smiles may change your, end up changing your perception on a problem that you are facing. So at the end of the day, when, when life throws you a fastball and after fastball after fastball, and then all of a sudden it throws you a curveball. When life paves this nice smooth road out for you, but then fills it with potholes, maybe a fissure right in the middle of the road, or maybe just takes this huge chunk out of the road that is life, right? When life becomes overall chaotic and just overbearing, I hope you remember this TED Talk. 
and just smile. Thank you.